Uh, ho- hello everyone, I will be your host Flub, and welcome to the Flub Date. We got a great show for you tonight, as we always do. Uh, we have on the docket, we got Team Bands, or Team Disbands, I, sh- I should say. We have the TI Main Qualifiers, which we'll be going over in detail on what happened this past week. And there's not really much to look, to look forward to in the next couple weeks, so we're kind of focusing just on them. There's a couple tournaments that are not too big that, are, that I'll be kind of getting into next week, but nothing too big on next week's docket. And we have a list of clowny games, the three clowny games that I'm going to be talking about. Things that would be fun to watch, even if you don't necessarily are a big fan of Dota, or if you're a great fan of Dota, you can see these really crazy combos that are fun to watch and interesting to see, whether you're very skilled at the game or you're very new at the game, they're just fun to see these little interactions, pub star type level of strategy. So without further ado, let's get into the show. All right, so first off, we got the team disbands. Team disbands that are available are all the not lower level teams, but tier two or tier three teams that I've been talking about in the past few weeks. We have Elements Pro Gaming, Cyber Ajit, uh, uh, Com- Com- Comanche, I almost screwed up the name, I'm sorry. Comanche have all been disbanded. So all three of those teams are no more. We also have team the team Dota Pro Dota Gaming. Their last member team uh, of the team, Garter, has left, and it is now official that the team has fully disbanded. They actually had the whole team, except for Garter, disband before, and he wanted to stay on, try to find something else. But he has hung up his pro Dota bootstraps as well, and that team has gone by the wayside. So whenever TI qualifiers come out and people don't make it, teams tend to disband at this point. So there's going to be a lot of disbands now, and then after the TI... We're probably going to see a lot more coming up then, but for now, people are going to stay together because they made it to at least through the qualifiers if they did. And if they didn't still stick together, then they may not be strong enough to kind of withstand the the, the pushback and the pressure of it anyway, and they just, this was the last straw for for them. So let's uh, check out, let's check out these TI qualifiers, the ones that we've been talking about. So in North America, we have... The NA qualifiers for the first team that got the team that got first was Team NP. They won the qualifiers through the round robin, and they actually tied with Team Freedom in an eight and one record. And then they beat Team Freedom in the tiebreaker. So they they played just as well. It was a very very solid match. I knew it. I knew Team NP. If you guys were watching last week, you guys got some free points there. So. That I'm glad that I was able to get something right this week. Uh, we also got Digital Chaos getting second. I called that as well. I'm super happy about my North American ones because I was shaky going in, if people remember. So I was a little bit shaky about this one, and I, I ended up getting it right on the nose. And they actually faced up against Team Freedom again. I didn't think Team Freedom was going to be this good, though. And Team Freedom did actually beat them in the winner's finals, but... They did go to the playoffs, and when the, at the end of the playoffs, when they got to the grand finals, they actually won versus Team Freedom 3-0. So they actually beat them. They wiped the floor with them, really, at that point. So congratulations to Team NP and Team Chaos, uh, Team Digital Chaos. We also have from the South America, we have in the South America qualifiers, we have the infamous team. And I actually, I, I saw this coming up. They are very solid in their own bracket, in their own style of play, in their own meta in South America. And when you see them matched up against these other teams, they actually didn't even lose a game outside of the, the round robin. They, when they were in the playoffs, they didn't lose a single game. They 2-0'd and then 3-0'd in, in the last bit and in the grand finals. And then they were, but they were seven and two in the round robin. So they didn't completely stomp the whole tournament. But when they're facing up against their own comrades or their own style of play, they seem to have a leg up on their competition. With Europe, we have Team Secret. No surprise there. They are the ones who picked up first, and they won through the round robin. And funny enough, they did. The only game that they lost in their round robin series was versus Mouse Sports. So I did say that they were going to pick up the second, 
they were going to pick up the second spot. I thought that they had a chance of really proving people wrong because when they, uh, it's funny, people always say that OG are the underdogs. Really, Mouse Sports are going to be the new underdogs in the next year or so. They're going to be the guys that are looked down upon, and really they're going to prove themselves here shortly. And they, and really, they proved themselves in this tournament. They didn't qualify, which stinks. Planet Dog were able to beat them out. A really not well heard of team. They were actually able to beat out Mount Sports in the finals, or in the grand finals of the main qualifier. They did actually beat Mouse Sports. Did actually beat Planet Dog though, and in the semifinals, and actually knocked them down. But then the Planet Dog were able to 3-1 them as the series went to the Grand Finals. So, good for them. You know, it's good to see new blood coming in. I'm a little disappointed because I do love Mouse Sports, and I was really hoping for them to get in. And maybe that was a little bit behind my decisions last week of trying to get them into that, that spot. I wanted to believe so hard to get them in there. And they, they didn't disappoint. They almost got there. They were third. So... And then in the CIS region, uh, I was way off here. I I was I threw a hail mary and it was like 50 yards away from the the receiver. We have Team Empire beating out everyone, and they had zero losses in the playoffs as well. Really, Team Empire was looking really strong. I should have gone with them. And honestly, they are they are a team that's a very competent team and they will probably do pretty well in the very beginning of ti they are looking quite strong and compared to their com compatriots they just they walk they walk all over them on china we got ig got first and they were actually to win through the round robin so on these three on these sets of threes we have the round robin winner and then the first winner because like they don't when they actually get to the grand finals on most of them they would actually play them out in china once you got past the finals in the bracket you actually qualified for the tournament so there was no loser bracket went to grand finals and versus the winners and then they played it out it was more of each each section you had like three chances to get to the uh to get to the qualifiers so or get past the qualifiers so they were able to get a seven and two victory and securing that they would qualify in the round robin ig vitality and lgd forever young were the ones who actually qualified and when it got down into the playoffs i actually switched those two in my brackets so if anyone who followed me i'm sorry sometimes it's hard to call it and i got i, I just i thought that LGD Forever Young were looking super solid, and they did. They did. They did very well, and had some great strategies. The last but not least, the L just LGD crew, the normal LGD crew, got third. And I should have put them. I even mentioned them in the cast last week. VGJ. I don't know why I was thinking, but I thought that they were gonna get there. And I just I love Team VGJ. So once the once again one of those hopes and prayers, just like with CIS and Europe. On Southeast Asia side, we got a little bit of a mix-up. I was not expecting this. TNC actually were able to win 8-1 through round robin, and that's not really a surprise. They were very, looking very strong. I thought about them. I actually had them as my second pick. So it's a really smart smart pick to pick up TNC. They, just, they have been playing on a whole new level since their roster change-up. They had uh, they had to do compete against Fnatic though. Fnatic and Execration were the guys who got second and third. Fnatic had some really weird strats and they are actually going to be the Fnatic Execration game is going to be one in the Clowny game section I'm going to be talking about here in a little bit. It was a fantastic game. And Fnatic was being old Fnatic self doing a lot of weird things and it actually paid off this tournament. They were able to win and through their Clowny ways and it was a lot of fun to watch. I I'm not really seeing them doing well in the TI call in, in the actual TI tournament, but it was good to see someone who had some potential, who was doing things that weren't in the meta. And I'm, if anything, I am always a fan of the innovation that that teams can have. It's good to see my boys' execration coming out of the woodwork. I actually didn't think that they were that strong this year. That's why I didn't put them on my list. And really, execration. I was really hoping they would get to TI last year with the whole debacle of 
their visas being denied and all that it really stunk but they haven't really adapted to 7.0 as well as other teams and I, I still think they have a chance though. i still think they have a chance so it's good to see them coming up out of the woodwork and doing well as well all right so on to the clowny games the games that you guys are really going to want to watch I mean, there's good games all throughout this tournament. There's plenty of things that you can watch, but the ones that are going to put a smile to your face here are going to be, first off, Team NP versus Planet Odd. Now, I would put this on a, not a whole cast of the game, because it is a 110-minute game, and that is ridiculously long, but it features one of my favorite heroes, Pugna, as a support. It's really fun. I really enjoy that on Team uh, uh, Team Planet Odds side and it was really funny by the end of the game there was so much craziness going on in this game they actually had a position 5 silencer because it was 110 minutes in had a divine rapier because he picked it up off of the enemy team picked up a divine rapier because he was the best person to have it the number 5 position Silencer was the best person on the team to pick it up. It was it was a good de decision. It's just really funny how this game goes, and you see how how crazy it gets when it goes super duper late game. Uh, really interesting to watch. I would definitely suggest watching it in the comments. All of these games I have links to, so you can find them in the descriptions whenever I have them up on YouTube, or just trying to to, to find them in general. I will have all the descriptions for you. You can click on any of the bottom of any of my videos. Fnatic versus Execration is the next one I want to talk about. Like I was talking about before, it's a really fun matchup that they had. They had a Pudge, Tuscar, and Bloodseeker lineup. And I know what you're saying. It only worked once, and it worked at the end of the game, but it was still fantastic to see by the end. And it was really fun to see the whole combination in general. And it wasn't just the, the classic idea. And the, for those of you who don't know, the classic combination is that you Bloodseeker ult someone, and the Tuscar picks up his... Alt, his alt scepter and when his his scepter gives him that kick ability that makes him move really far and you can do it through bkb so basically you do massive amounts of damage you force people to take incredible amounts of life loss from bloodseeker's ultimate giving you a very useful combination right there and he provides a lot of lockdown as a support if you want to do that or as a, an offlaner he just he has a lot of things that he, he, he provides a lot that Bloodseeker is missing. So there's he has a good, great potential with, with him. And then there's the Pudge. You also get the hook with Pudge. There's a lot of, a lot of availability by hooking someone who is ruptured. Obvious combo that's existed for a long time. But the thing is, you can easily dodge out of hook. So there's actually a combination with all three of these heroes that is really interesting, and it's really cool to see it played out. There's a couple times in, in this in this game where you actually get to see it and you can use your ice shard so if someone gets alted by bloodseeker you can actually use your ice shards keep them in that in that distance in that area and they don't want to move even if you get ice shards but then you throw your hook and they can't just easily dodge out of the way because your body blocking or your ice shards are blocking at the same time and they take massive amounts of damage for it and if they are trying to man mode versus a tuscar you can always go into your snowball you can just go into your snowball and stun them to like set up the hook, or you can go into your snowball to avoid any of the damage. They're actually facing a Sven. It's an incredibly smart move to have that whenever someone can get into that god strength mode and give their availability to just destroy your lineup. So a lot of combination there. Not only that, they actually had an availability to see and slow down people by using the Frozen Sigil to slow people down for hooks and give sight for hooks so that they couldn't get away. Also, Bloodseeker providing sight whenever they're low. A lot of these, a lot of times, Pudge and Tusk can get people low, especially with Invis heroes. They can get people low and then they just Invis away. And Bloodseeker was able to keep them keep the sight on them when they were very low. So it was a very good combination. It was a lot of fun to watch, and I highly suggest watching that game. The really fun part was at the end, though, and I won't spoil it. I'll let you guys see it. And the open qualifiers, I know this isn't technically the main qualifiers, but it is something to be watched and remembered because this is something that in my 10 years of Dota, I don't think I've actually seen a strat like this work this well 
And what happened was, it was I couldn't find the team's name, so it's the Radiant versus way too many bananas. But the idea of this game is that they got zero kills and just went straight push. They didn't ever go after anyone. They used their stuns and all of their availability to keep people at bay while pushing towers and doing just forcefully taking out objectives. A lot of fun to watch. Really cool. All of these are all wrapped up in a bow, so you don't have to go through the entire game. But it's really interesting to watch this last one because they didn't actually go for it. And if you go watch through all the video, you're going to say, but wait, Flub. They actually do get two kills. They do get two kills because the Mega Creeps are getting the two kills. And they're not really providing anything except for stuns to keep them themselves alive and things like that. So... Really, watch this game. It's a lot of fun to watch, and it's just good fun. It's just good fun. All right, guys. All good things must end, and I must close out the show. So a big thanks to Bass Rebels for providing the free music that we are listening to in the background here. If you liked our show, please give us a like or a subscribe. It helps us out a bunch around here. And you can go to any of those places by going to our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash Studios. You can go to our YouTube channel, which is just Zombie Panda Studios, once again. You can go to our Patreon, give to our Patreon, which is www.patreon.com slash Zombie Panda Studios. Very, very similar words here, as you can tell. Trying to keep it with a theme. If you want to, you can follow me on Twitter, and I will give you updates on every new show that's going to be coming out. There's a lot of different content that are going to be coming out, streams, anything like that that you're interested in by what I, on what I can do. Uh, you can follow me on my Twitter, at FlubDota. Or you can follow our station, so you can follow me and Kimbrel, at ZPanda Studios. If you have, if you have any in inclination to listen to an audio version of these casts, instead of, you know, watching the VODs, you can always, you can actually find us on Stitcher, iTunes, or SoundCloud. They haven't actually been set up yet. I'm working on it this week, so if you are listening to this on on it live, then I'm sorry. We will have to we will try to convert it for you. But if you're listening to it on, on audio, well, you're probably listening to it a couple days late. But we appreciate the listen nonetheless. And I would like to give a special thanks to our Patreon. We have one Patreon that signed up already, and we've only had our Patreon up for like two or three days. And that is Tim Kaninsky. So thank you, Tim Kaninsky, for signing up and giving us money. Really appreciate it, man. You've been a fan since since it seems like day one of mine and of ours, and I really appreciate it. So I wanted to give you a special shout-out. All right, guys. Well, you've been updated, or if updated. Uh, and uh, I hope to catch you next week for the Brewmasters Draft or for a brand-new show on Sunday of the Flupdate. All right, guys. I'll catch you later.